Hey guys, I am here at the Greensburg Power of the Past show in Greensburg, Indiana. And this show always brings in a huge number of tractors. It also has a nice toy show, a big flea market, and you can hear lawnmowers and everything else going on around us because there's always stuff going on. This year, it seems like the featured tractor is international because there's a ton of internationals, but every year international brings a lot. However, what's cool this year and what I'm gonna look at is the Custom Manufacturing Company Club is having their meet here. And for those of you who don't know, Custom Manufacturing was a company in Shelbyville, Indiana, and they made tractors. You can see them behind me. They were red, but they made the tractor that was sold by Montgomery Wards. The Wards tractor, they also made a few others, and then they made a few that had their own name. It's a tractor you just don't see very often at any of the shows. It's just that different. Now, Speccast, they did actually make us a model of, well, two different versions of the Wards, and I'll put a picture of those here so you can see the models that they made of the Wards tractors. And then, let's go on and take some time and look at these tractors. I think you're really gonna appreciate this. All right, what do we got? Uh, yeah, my name is Chris Purcell. Uh, I'm from Hamilton, Ohio. Um, and I'm a member of the uh, Custom Tractor Club. We travel around the United States. Um, but actually, we've never been south of the Ohio River, but we've been Ohio, <laughs> Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. And we just try to move our, our show uh, around to someplace different to try to get other club members so they don't have to travel as far to meet with us. Okay. And this year we chose, chose Greensburg, Indiana. Which is actually pretty close to home for, for these, these tractors. For custom tractors because they were all built in just uh, up the street. Shelbyville, Indiana. Yeah. It's uh, only what about 15, 20 miles from here? Yeah. 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 They had actually had two different locations uh, found out. Uh, one was on Elizabeth Street in Shelbyville which no longer is, exists because a, a a factory expanded and they took the street out and then the other one was on um, St. Joe's Street but uh, none of the buildings exist anymore from where these were built. Yeah. That figures. Yeah. Now let's talk about some of the tractors. Okay. They basically built uh, um, the early ones. Uh, if you can see they just have the channel iron frame on them. Okay. okay? And those are what we call the straight clutch mod models. They just got the uh, straight clutch with the five-speed uh, new process transmission. Uh, then the company had to build a gear reduction box that bolted right onto the back of the transmission to, so they could slow it down. You were just talking about how fast they go. Yeah, wasn't it was a truck? It was a truck transmission. Oh yes, it was a truck transmission. But they put that gear reduction box, which is made up of a basically it's just like a three-inch wide timing chain is what it looks like really yeah and <laughs> then it goes straight into an eaton uh trucker end which is what they used in the dodge um ton and a half two ton trucks cool same rear end so it, of course they had to make hubs you know to bolt the nine bolt wheels to right new yeah. new hubs mm -hmm. and then it was a Chrys chrysler train engine yeah yeah they're all every they all have chrysler engines in it. there's okay. three different sizes that they used okay uh, this one here <clears throat> used the 217 they were industrial in, they were the industrial model um, this one here was called an IND 5 industrial ind 5, five. Uh, this tractor here has got the IND 6 in it which that's is that's the IND 6 which IND is a 230 230 it's same block same pistons just different crank okay changed, they made a longer stroke so a little longer stroke yeah and then um, uh, yeah, this one is called an HR. They made another one at the same time that was called an ER that had the bigger six cylinder motor in it, which was a 250. 250. And there is, uh, yeah, that's what this, this is. This is called a Rock All 98. Rock All? But that's the same thing as an EW. And uh, it's got the 250. And that one's got the 250 in it, yeah. And they, it was the, the block is about two inches longer. Okay. So, so yeah, it, the. the so yeah, it's the, taking up more space. Yeah, in the just frame. taking up a little more space. Um, so yeah, so like this one here, the one with the, the straight clutch models, they'll still go 25 mile an hour down the road. 
for that day that's a we, good speed for we, a we don't, tractor we don't do that very often <laughs> uh, nice late strat road or maybe maybe a horse race track maybe um and then uh as far as drivetrain goes and then when you went to these you can see the the differences in the frames that one just had the channel iron frame this one had the kind of the tapered flat steel Taper frame. flame yeah and then I can but see it does that. it does roll underneath a couple inches there for strength the okay strength. Um, now this is what uh, this is what we call the fluid drive models fluid drive fluid drive if you look point your camera over there see look at the bell housing see how see how deep the bell housing is from here to the transmission right okay then if you flip over here on the straight clutch models see how short it is okay I okay. can see that so what these have is they've got bolted directly to the crankshaft is a um, excuse me is the is a torque converter like in an automatic transmission really yeah and then bolted to that is the the the, the clutch plate clutch plate the clutch plate and the pressure plate so you could still disengage it you know with your clutch but it's got a torque converter in it just like an automatic transmission and wow. they, they put those in Dodge put those in their cars and trucks it was called the gyro fluid drive I think in the cars we just call it fluid, fluid drive, drive. Um, they also put this same thing in some of the old co-ops number twos and number threes did um, custom make for co-op no no okay. what happened the relationship between them is there's three guys um, <clears throat> uh, named uh, Edwin Ashley Claude Brown and Dan Heineker. Uh, there were three guys that worked for co-op, uh, National Farmers, Farmers Co-op in Shelbyville. Mm -hmm. And they sometime, we don't know, we don't know the exact thing, um, but the, uh, they got into a dispute with the leadership at, at Farmers Co-op sometime during World War II. Okay. Okay. And they, those three guys left. And they got, uh, sometime in 44, we believe, they got some um, government contract to build military equipment, like a lot of people did. Okay? Yeah. And that's how custom manufacturing got started. Okay. And then after the war is when they started building tractors. And if you ever look at a, uh, I don't know, I don't think there's one here, uh, a co-op. But you, you can go to Google it. A co-op B2 mm -hmm. um, and a B2 Junior. If you look at the, have these two tractors sitting side by side, you will think that the same guy yeah. had his hands in it and you yeah. would be correct. Because those three guys, they in, built them. and engineered that tractor and they built and engineered these. Uh, See, I had seen those and then seen the wards. That's why I thought there was the right. connection but i didn't know really what it was yeah i mean the hoods are very very similar mm -hmm. they, they got a couple little differences in them and i think um um i think it's a, a b i think a b2 junior actually uses the same dash <laughs> i've only seen a couple of those so those those are really hard to find if, but if you went talk to some real hardcore co-op guys they they could uh, really lay that down for you yeah. Um, so where was it? So, so that was the drive train. And then, and then in these tractors too here, since they did away with the the gear reduction box, which is that's there. The, this here's the gear reduction box, right? On the straight clutch models, okay. And then over here, see, they did away with it. But they didn't have that, okay? right? So that. what they did is, you can point your camera right in here, give you a really good shot of it. They put the gear reductions. They put a. They changed the rear end. Okay. And this is a Timken built rear end, and they got the reductions out here. It's kind of like what they did on WD forty five hours. You know? Right, right, right. And that's how they slowed it down, but they still go will go twenty five plus mile an hour. <laughs> um, so they they changed that rear end, um, and they used that same rear end on um, they sold it for a lot of other things. Um, there were some old corn pickers that used those drive those axles. Mm -hmm. Also Huber road grader old huber road graders it's got the blade that Somewhere. mounts underneath the belly of them yeah. you ever seen they use those rear ends up too so huh. yeah they sold them for more than just more than just this tractor 
Yeah. Yeah, I would. I assumed that custom manufacturing made more than just these tractors. And well, no, this was pretty much it. They but this had, is primarily what yeah, they did. This is this is pretty much all they did. Yeah, they didn't even make any. The only implements that we know of that they ever built was the mounted cultivators hmm. that went on. Um, and there's only. I only know of two two of those in existence, and wow. one of those is actually on a tractor in Pennsylvania. A guy restored it and put the cultivators on it. Well, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah it, it is pretty cool. I've, I've, I've got to see it. <laughs> but for, well, unfortunately, it's all the way on the eastern side, <laughs> end of Pennsylvania. So, uh, uh, we don't get to see them very very often just because these, yeah, these tractors are just so spread out. Um, there's a lot of them in Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio. Um, Which does make sense. Yeah. The, and, it looks like they're more set up for Wheatland and grain, grain crop farming than... Well, I mean, the like, truck farm. like th this one here, Model C, it was the standard tractor. Mm -hmm. um, it, the C was the standard. The B was the row crop. Model. The row crop. Yeah. And uh, you could have got a B with this front end on it. This is what we call the convertible front end. Really? Okay. Because you can convert it from narrow to wide. Like if you, like you can't. We, we, if you see a picture of the cultivators, you can't cultivate with the wide front end on because there's too much. The, the, the shanks are in, in the way. Yeah. So what they did was, you see right here where the steering is bolted on. Yep, I see that. So you just you use this the narrow front end post, okay? Uh huh. And you got this bolted on here. So to swap it back, you would unbolt this, okay? okay. And then if you look on this side, see where this the spindle the wheel spindles are bolted on I right see here. That. You take them off and just bolt them to the middle, and you got an air front and tractor. And you wow! Take, and you take all the front and axle off. And the rest off. of the axle comes off. And another tie with co-op, they had these available on the B2s. Huh. So, yeah. I, I don't nice. know of anybody else, any other company that ever made something like that. You could switch it back and forth like that. But I, I, I imagine I've never take, heard of that. I imagine it would take you half a day to do it, but, you know. Well. But you really couldn't, uh, you really couldn't cultivate. There's just too much stuff in the road with that yeah. front end. Yeah. Yeah, wide fronts weren't great for cultivating. No, well, and these weren't adjustable either. You couldn't move them in and out for your rows. Your road track was fixed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, about the only thing you could do would be flip the, flip the wheel around, and that was it. So, yeah. yeah, that's not going to do much. <laughs> right, right, it would not do much. Yeah. And then, when it comes to the wards, they were sold by Montgomery Ward. Correct, yeah. What was custom? Who okay. sold them? Okay, well, when they, when they started out... Um, <clears throat> the business when those three guys left and after they got done with ore production then they started building tractors and they started marketing them through uh, like Diamond T trucks dealerships Dodge truck dealerships because they would already had you know they had the to tie services. in with the Chrysler <clears throat> tie in with the Chrysler and the parts you know yeah so that's who they generally tried to market them through and <clears throat> very early on in production they got tied in with a company called Lear which is a, which later became Dunham Lear, which made a lot of tillage tools. Okay. Uh, and they were pretty popular in the 70s and 80s. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether they're still, whether they've been bought up by somebody. But they were actually based in, um, uh, they had two offices, one in Kentucky and one in Richmond, Indiana, which is only not you know, that far an hour or so yeah, drive exactly. from Shelbyville. Exactly. So, <clears throat> so they already had, you know, a little bit of dealership with their with their other with some of their tillage equipment and so they just put the Lear name on it and, and started with it same so, tractor but they uh, to our information is they after <clears throat> they really only stuck with the straight clutch tractors okay, okay? because that that's what they started with and they and serial number wise they ran uh, these up just barely into the 1000s serial number okay uh, then they pretty much switched all over to doing the fluid drives the fluid and um, there were no there are no leers that were fluid drive tractors so that they were yeah. done before then you're right and those three guys are the ones that designed and developed the fluid drive tractor but not long after they started producing it is when they sold they sold out uh, to a, a man by the name of Henry Lolfer which was from Joliet, Illinois. And he was a businessman. He wasn't an engineer. He was a businessman. And we believe that he already had ties to Montgomery Ward's 
with some of the other businesses that he was involved in. So, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are at a tractor show, can you tell? Yes, sir. Um, and uh, where was I at? Oh, yeah. So, he bought the custom company. And sadly, we think that they, they sold it because the two older guys, uh, Edwin Ashley and um, Claude Brown, uh, the one man died in 19... Edwin Ashley, he actually died in 1951. Okay. Uh, but he had, they sold to uh, Lothar, Henry Lothar, in like late 49, early 50. So probably health issues. Yeah, yeah, health issues might have had something to do with it. Most likely. Now, um, to our knowledge, uh, um, uh, they stayed with the company. Um, we know that Claude Brown and... Uh, uh, Dan Heinecker, he stayed with them for a long time as, mm -hmm. a, as an engineer, but um, <clears throat> and, and kept working there. Um, so that's when they started uh, marketing through Montgomery, through Montgomery Wards, Wards. But they still sold them through the the truck because you, you still find ones like this that still have, just have the custom name on it that don't have the Wards emblem on it. But okay. by that time, uh, Lear was was done. They were out. They were out of it. Now whether when the the, the sale took place. They decided they were done, and they decided they were out of the tractor business. But they did sell quite. A, there are quite a few Lear Okay. Um, and then there was um, two companies in Canada. One was called Regal, and one was called the Rock Oil Company, and that's where the Rock All comes from. Really? Yeah. And I had it. never heard of the Rock All until yeah. this show. Yeah. And I got some literature on it over there. You can look at that uh, is a Rock Oil Company. Um, and it was all Canada, and they mainly uh, shipped um, like the standard tractors up went to Canada. Okay. Uh, like the one that I have over there, that's a standard tractor. Never had a, never even had a PT, never even had a, uh, had PTO and belt pulling, but it never had a hydraulic system on. Right. And most just, of these by then had tractors. high. It was just mainly go out, hook to a disc, and work ground all day. And um, <clears throat> that's what they did up with them up there. And then the Regal Company, we we know very very little about it. Um, don't even know how many they they sold. Uh, I actually, but you know they did exist. Yeah, I know they did exist because actually I went to the library of Shelbyville the other day just to see what I could find, and they did have a, two photos, one of a, a semi truck with a double decker like a car hauler double deck trailer mm -hmm. full of custom model C's with the Regal name on them and the side of the trailer had Regal tractors on it huh. that, where they had loaded at the factory on its way to Canada yeah was, yeah I'm glad I found that that's something I'd never seen before that's cool yeah so they had they had the model B the model C did they have any other models okay uh, of the straight clutch that was it model okay. B and the C yeah. but then when you went to the fluid drive models you had the model H which had the 230 engine, in, engine in it, and it was called an HR row crop. Okay. And, or HW would have been the standard. The standard. Crop, okay. <clears throat> for we maybe the abbreviation for Wheatland. Okay. Most likely. Most likely. Um, then they had the um, uh, the big motor tractor, the E model, which had the 250. Of course, they had an ER and EWs. Wheatland standards. Wheatland standards. Yeah. And that's what the models were if they were sold as customs or as uh, Ward's tractors. <clears throat> and then the Rock Alls, they started adopting the um, the num a numbering system of the 98, Rock All 98. Okay. Rock All 98 had the large motor in it, and then a 96 had the small motor in it. Oh, um, cool. <clears throat> and which makes sense because the big motors industrial number was IND8 the mm -hmm. small motor was IND6 so that makes perfect sense now, then I do have a piece of literature that mentions a 97 and Chrysler did make an IND7 which was the big block motor just with a shorter crank in it shorter crank but we don't know that they ever actually built one of those tractors it but may it, have been it a is, prototype or it something is, well it's mentioned on the literature of on, on the models it says 96 97 98 
So if you wanted one with that motor, you could have got it. But we, we don't have one. any records, no evidence, or have ever found one that had that motor. That anybody ever made it. Yeah. So it's a possible unicorn out there. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> but then I got that one piece of literature, then I got another piece of literature on the on the rock halls also that leaves the 97 out. So <laughs> So who knows? Yeah, right, yeah. Exactly. There there's a lot of who knows. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's possible maybe they well, they were gonna offer it and then they <clears throat> didn't yeah. or something, you never yeah, know. Right, yeah. And decided. And then um but no that the, then the company so yeah, it went from the original guys that started the company in, uh, you know, sometime during the war. Uh, then they, probably because of health reasons, in late uh, 49 is when they sold it to Henry Lolfer. And then the Lolfer family ran it. Um, I have to go back and look at my literature to get exact, but sometime in 51, late 51, 52, is <clears throat> then they sold it. And the company got moved to Butler, Indiana, but only for like six months. Um, really don't know why they did this, but uh, some people think it was cause of military, trying, these people were trying to do some military Get into military contracting. Yeah, so then it went, they went from Butler, Indiana to Hutchiford, Wisconsin. Um, and actually we have one tractor that is sitting here today that was built there. They're, okay. they're almost identical. They did a few cosmetic changes and improvements to, uh, to them. Mainly, one of the main things was, was the platform. They made the platform a lot bigger and mounted the fenders differently. Um, that's one of the obvious things. And they also started the serial numbers over. Well, like, okay, let me back up a little bit. The ones built in Shelbyville, um, they ran serial numbers up into the 2100s. Okay. Okay. Uh, then they got bought out. We don't know that they ever built anything in Butler, Indiana. We have we have no, no idea, idea. No idea whether they did. At six months, it's kind of hard to think yeah, that they did. Yeah. Did they even get anything set up? Yeah. Uh, and then when they went to Hudson for Wisconsin, um, and and they they started up again. Um, we think they started restarted the serial number tagging. At right around 3,000, um, because any, all the all the ones that we have are between that we have records are, are between 3,000 and 3,200. So we don't even know whether if there was heard, anything else. We've heard stories that they only built 40, but I have one that's got a serial number of um, uh, 3,038, I believe, is its number. But then the one that is sitting here is. 3168 I think so that's so, a bit more than 40 <laughs> yeah it's a bit more than 40 but at the same time we've also come across some of those that we know that were built there that don't even have a tag or serial number stamped in them <laughs> so completely lost there yeah so we really don't know but a lot of those probably ended up in Canada because one they were in Minnesota a little bit closer to Canada and a lot of them were sold as rock halls but some were built as customs as customs well. yeah so the Montgomery Wards didn't last too terribly long, did they? Uh, selling these tractors, no. The, the, the tra and oddly enough, I have a 1949 and a 1951 Montgomery Ward's Farm Store catalogs, and they don't have these tractors in them. Really? I've never found a 1951. I always wanted to find a, a the 50 to see if to it's see there. It is. But the, all their other farm equipment is in the catalog, like the disc planters and stuff like that. Yeah. The catalog. Montgomery Ward also sold uh, an Avery tractor uh, that they just put the Ward's name on the side of it. The little uh, Avery A's. The A? Uh, um, yeah, or sometimes they were called Generals also. And those are in that catalog, but these are not. But huh. These Ward's are not. Weird. Yeah, I know. N none that we've ever found. And we're always, always looking for literature and just because it's so, it's so scarce. They, scarce, obscure. And yeah. Because the, the guys that the guys that uh, you know started this company, they were engineers and builders. They weren't advertisers, and they weren't historians. And they weren't historians either, right? Yeah. So the, but, the yeah. reason there's so much green versus everything else is those guys, that company focused on the advertising department. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah it, it's sad that the you know the company didn't last very long, but they just they didn't have the the, the marketing network and. 
And also, you got to remember the 1940s and 1950s, you were going to, like Oliver Cockshut, they had live PTOs. There was no way to incorporate a live PTO into this system. With their transmission yeah, stuff. with using a truck transmission and just adapting to it. There really wasn't no way to do that. And, you know, and everybody was adopting that technology. So, and there was just no way to do that. I mean, they had the live hydraulics. That wasn't a problem. But, the PTO, but no PTO. Yeah, it wasn't going to, it just wasn't going to fly. They yeah. had to do a lot of, a lot of re-engineering. A lot of re-engineering. Did they ever offer a belt pulley? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, right there beside you. No. Uh, yeah. There it is. A paper one. Uh, very similar to uh, what uh, they used on farm wall M's and H's. Um, the same paper paper style. Okay. Yeah, they weren't none of them were steel. Yeah. But they couldn't. But the PTO. Yeah. Cause yeah. Because it, it just it's just a gearbox mounted on the side of the transmission, and then they ran this shaft here back to the back and brought it out the back for the for the PTO for the PTO. Yeah. Yeah, just no way they could have done that with, with using a truck They'd transmission. They had to come up with a new transmission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, of course, people were starting to adapt, you know, power steering and stuff like that, which they could have done if they wanted to. Yeah, power steering wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah. But they, they just used what parts were available. I mean, if you look at the tractor, the only parts that they really had to make themselves were the frames, the sheet metal. Frames and sheet metal. The platform. The seats were... Uh, from a company called Needler. They were an aftermarket seat company. Uh, the, uh, the <laughs> That one sounds pretty nice. Yeah. I always like the way the cock shut. Which is... They had nice styling. Yeah. I always like the color of the later ones, the deluxe models. Mm-hmm. green color. Where was that? Oh yeah, uh, the front, the, the steering box was a Ross, which is the same thing they used on um, Cockshut E3, Co-op E3s and Cockshut 30s, same steering gear box. But the pedestal is different. They had to make the pedestals. They had to make a new pedestal front. They had to make the pedestals. Um, and their front axle assembly. And, and the front axle assembly, and obviously the gear reduction box. They do have custom uh, stamped into the back side of them. You've got to crawl underneath the tractor to see them. But it's there. Um, you know, in the in the PTO, but you know the gear, the PTO, the gearbox. You know that, you know that was manufactured by somebody else because, you know, some Dodge trucks would have had to have a PTO on them to run hydraulic pumps for their hoists and, mm -hmm. and things like that. So, yep. You know, all the cars, you know, they would have had to probably would have had to have the radiator done, and you know, obviously make the fuel tank and the dash and all that. But, you know, they yeah, just they probably have to redesign from wherever they could get them. Yeah, they'd probably have to have a radiator made that would fit their space. Yeah, yeah, it'd fit in it. And they probably used the same company that, that made the ones for the B2 co-ops, too. Probably. And they probably did. Because, you know, just the width of the, the hood and everything. Yeah, that would make I've never actually sense. compared those two, but um, I imagine they're very similar. I'm going to finish off this video here, and I want to thank Chris Purcell again for taking the time to explain all this history about the custom manufacturing the custom tractors and the Ward's tractors rock all the whole bit. I really want to appreciate him for taking that time to explain it. And guys, please go on and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comments down below. Have you guys ever seen any of these tractors before? If so, let me know what you think. And if not, let me know what you think of this video. Thanks guys. See you in the next one. Bye.